Hello everyone and welcome back. I've got a few smaller things I want to discuss today. In the memory video where I built this module and integrated it, I had a small problem that I at the time attributed to a timing issue on the address registers, but it turned out not to be that and I've kind of um, pushed that to one side, but I'd like to spend some time today explaining what that was and how I fixed it. It's quite a minor issue in the grand scheme of things. So I hope you'll see why I didn't uh, spend a bunch of time on it. I'm starting to gain a bit of mess up here and I would have a little bit of a, a tidy up of that. But also in the memory bridge video, I hit a issue with the fetch suppress being activated by the reset, which I, I kind of bypassed that functionality just to get things working. So I want to get the reset working again properly. Now, firstly, since we're talking about this memory module, it's been annoying me that this uh, moves. So uh, I've made up a wire that uh, I'm hoping will uh, fix it in place. This doesn't serve an electrical purpose. It's just going to cross connect ground on this bus bar. There we go. It's not going to drift as much. I've got the build on this piece of wood that um, I used to store it. Now I've definitely created some issues in the past by constantly moving it from here to the desk and back. So I'm more likely to, to keep it on this wood in future. Okay, so here is the circuitry design for how we access memory. Now I'm using the memory load line directly into write enable because at the first glance, looking at the timing diagram, it looked like that was going to be okay. But if you look back at that video, you'll see I did discuss the possibility of putting the four spare inverters we've got on the breadboard ahead of the write enable line in order to delay the signal because I identified there were some benefits to the timing for that. But I kind of disregarded it because um, I didn't see those benefits actually having relevance to us at the kind of clock rates that are plausible. But let me show you something. Now, when I was probing around on it, I did realize that the signals that were making it to the RAM chip were exactly what I expected them to be and what I thought should work. In fact, I tried a different RAM chip and it did work. So I came back here and looked at this diagram to try and understand what was going on. Now, one difference between the timing diagrams here and the simplified timing diagram that I described for my processor's function is that the write enable is generated directly from bus control, but bus control at the same time as generating that signal is producing the signal that causes the appropriate register to write its address to the bus. And so we have a situation where the address is actually changing slightly after write enable. And so this was behavior I didn't expect, but that causes what's technically undefined behavior. But what was actually happening, it was writing the data to both the previous address that was here and the one after. So I tried it on a different RAM chip and it actually all seemed to work fine. But what we need to do is bring the build into alignment with this ordering of events and then the problem um, will be okay. So looking back here, these extra inverters that we discussed, what they do is they have an effect on the memory load line, like so, it's pushed back. So as well as making the improvement to the timing that we discussed that for, it also resolves this issue where the address is changing immediately after the write enable line changes. And so if I had actually made that uh, modification that we discussed in the RAM video, I would never have had the problem. Here's the change, pretty straightforward and simple. Um, and we had already discussed actually doing this for a different reason, but this made the problem go away. Okay, these wires up here are a bit messy. These ones I added for testing. This one's a bit tight. Actually. I guess it's going to be difficult to update those wires, but uh, I may come back to them at some point. Okay, this little board here was added to introduce a time delay into the clock going to bus control. And that's definitely messy.
I'm going to take this clock line with a slightly longer wire. Also occurs to me that we don't have any decoupling on this uh, board. Ground interconnect it doesn't need to be like that. Okay, it's slightly neater. This green wire here is a control pin that comes out from pipeline stage one to the fetch unit to stop fetching from happening when it's trying to grab an immediate to the constant register. Don't know why I left that as a flying wire for so long. All right, let's test we haven't broken anything. So once again, I've got to press reset twice with a clock in between because the reset signal here is, uh, is broken. This is still the push-pop test code, but it should demonstrate everything's working. It's the pushes, and then the pops. That, that's all good. Okay, now, the fetch suppress line, which is used by pipeline stage two when it wants to access memory, and it wants to tell the fetch unit to both not fetch an instruction, but also not to increment the program counter. That's the one that didn't work when I ord it with the reset line. So if we did that, then what would happen is the while we were resetting, the fetch unit would always you know, emit a NOP, 0, 0, 0, 0. And so it would eliminate this weird need I've got where when I press reset, I end up with odd instructions in here, and I need to clock it to take the current address of the program counter out into the latches and then reset again and I actually end up with nothing. And so if we could re-enable this, so just move it one slot to the right, it would start working, apart from we had the problem. And my guess was when we added this circuit to delay the clock to the bus control is it would probably fix that. So we could just change it or we could fire up the oscilloscope and see what actually happens on that line because if we see the change we expect then we can be far more confident that we've not just shuffled a problem around. All right, I'm going to extract this address register because this one I soldered some wires on when we were debugging the weird increments we were getting. So I've got easy ways to get the oscilloscope into the control lines. And these boards should be completely interchangeable. All right, to recreate the problem, we need to remove the delay from the clock line. And then move that to the output of the OR gate. So where do I want to put this? See if we can actually put it on that fetch suppress line. Okay, we've got the oscilloscope set up. Let's see if we can spot the problem. So this should be any memory read or write if, um, if we're correct. So as it is, Every time I clock the CPU, we get an increment. So the purple line here is the fetch suppress, which is low to say we're not suppressing fetch and then the yellow line, the rising edge, is the increment. So we need to step through all of these loads. And there's the problem. So the fetch suppress went high
but we get this little glitch on the increment line. All right, so let's move it to the delayed clock. Let's see if we can get that again. And it didn't happen there. That increments are nice and clean where they should be. That's good. But I don't know if you noticed my uh, brief hesitation there because the reset isn't fixed. And we don't get erratic instructions appear up here so this line this line is doing its job but we are when we finish the reset process we've got an instruction that's passing through the pipeline which could mess things up that was okay Ah, I see. So when we hit reset, whatever the last instruction we were fetching is still present there. It disappears during the reset because it's fetch suppressed. Okay. So this all gate here is merging the clock signals up. And this line here is the one going off to our clock delay. That comes directly from the main clock, not the one we merge. So it's not getting the extra clock ticks, so the latch chips aren't taking the new address. So that should be a simple fix. Just need to move that over to the merged clock line. Okay, so this looks good. We've powered it up and everything's in a nice, simple state. Let's get the scope probes out. Okay, that did something weird. Reset, brought it back. That's working. And reset is back. Excellent, so I've fixed the reset as well. I appreciate there's probably some more tidying I could do up here. I actually want to come back to the clock and the reset circuitry at some point, but you not in the next couple of videos, so I thought it was worth uh, fixing the reset just to make life a little bit easier. All the memory functionality is working, I've explained that, and I think we're, we're good to move on to the, the next step and implement the call and return. Okay, well, I hope you found this interesting, and. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye.